Today, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of noise in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is all about reducing noise. We're gonna show you how to take any noise that you have in your image and reduce it all the way down to zero. We're gonna start off today's episode by analyzing noise and talking about what actually creates noise in your image. Then we're gonna jump into the reduce noise filter. We're gonna show you how to target noise in your image and how to bring it down to zero. And lastly, we're gonna use a really cool technique using the surface blur to really bring down the level of noise. All right guys, so today's episode is all about reducing noise in your image, but the best way to not have noise in your image is to shoot with a low ISO. Now, ISO is one of three parts of exposure using a digital camera. We've got aperture, we've got shutter speed, and we've got ISO. Now, aperture is basically the size of the hole in your lens. So if you have a large hole, it's gonna let a lot of light in. If you have a small hole, it's gonna get a little bit of light in. So a large hole, that would be like f1.4, f2.0. A small hole would be like f16, f22, or something like that. Shutter speed is how long your shutter is actually open. So let's say you have a one second shutter speed. Well, your shutter is gonna be open for one whole second and it's gonna let light in during that entire period of time. Now a short shutter speed, something like one over 200th of a second, is only letting light in for this period of time. So it doesn't let a lot of light into your camera. So what happens a lot of the time is you can't use a very long shutter speed because things would be moving around in your image and you're gonna get a lot of blur. So that's why you have to use a shorter sh shutter speed in order to capture the action. Now a lot of times what happens there is people bump up their ISO, which is the sensitivity of their sensor. So they can use a short shutter speed, but still maintain a proper exposure by bumping up the ISO. Now, when you bring your ISO up really high, it's basically the sensor in your digital camera that's doing the work. It's basically like turning up the amplitude of your sensor. Now, anytime you turn up the amplitude of something, you're going to start introducing noise because you don't have enough information to actually capture that photo. So you're instead increasing the sensitivity of it. And when you increase the sensitivity of it, you're going to be introducing artifacts and other types of noise. So the best thing you can do to reduce that noise in your image is not have your sensor have to work so hard. You can keep your ISO down to like 100, 200, 400, even 800, you shouldn't see that much noise. It's when you start going up above like 3200 and 6400, that's when you're gonna start to see a lot of noise. Now, new cameras are blowing me away. The ISO, you can really crank your ISO up and you're not gonna see a ton of noise in those images. But still, the best thing you can do to reduce the noise in camera is to keep your ISO level down. All right guys, so now that we know a little bit about what actually causes the noise in the image, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and look at reducing noise if you have it in your image. All right guys, so here we are in Photoshop. We've got an awesome picture of a concert and this is actually the time that you actually would have a lot of noise in your image because it's so dark. It's something like a concert where you really have to crank your ISO up a little bit higher in order to get a proper exposure. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and look at what kind of noise we have in our image. And we have, you can see it's mostly gonna be visible here in our darks. Basically all this like little grain, that's what's our noise and that's what we're gonna be eliminating in this image, all this stuff here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna duplicate my background layer. We're gonna click here and just bring it down to the new layer icon. There we go. And we're gonna to go to filter and I'm gonna go down here to noise and we're gonna to go to reduce noise. Okay. Now our reduce noise dialog, we're gonna take a look here and we're basically, we've got a little sliver of information there here on the left. So let's go ahead and start with our strength being right about zero and this is doing no noise reduction at all. Now I do have my preview turned on so I should actually see everything in my image itself. Okay, now we have a couple different channels here. We've got our basic and we've got our advanced which is gonna allow us to do per channel noise. So if you notice you've got a lot of like red noise or it's predominantly green or blue, you can go per channel. But I find it works best usually just going with here and overall. Okay, now bringing our strength up, basically you wanna bring your strength up just to the point where you can start to really see a noise reduction in your image, but you don't wanna to go too far. For instance, this image has a lot of noise in it, so I'm having to bring my strength up way to like a strength of like eight in order to see what's going on in my image. 
There we go. Let's just tr turn our preview on and back off. Now, even with a strength of like eight or nine, I'm still not seeing a lot of noise reduction. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go to preserve details. We're going to bring this way down. So then it's going to say, okay, cool. We don't need to preserve a lot of the details that are in my image. And we can see we've reduced a lot of noise there. Now, the next thing is our color noise. We can see we have a lot of different colors. We've got little dots of red and green and blue in our image. So we want to make sure we bring that way up because we want to reduce the amount of color noise in our image. There we go. And we can see it's basically reduced all those different colors in the image. OK, now sharpen details. If we want to go ahead and sharpen it after the fact, you can do that. But what it's going to do most of the time is that it's actually going to bring back a lot of that noise details. So I usually have this right down to 0 so it doesn't try to sharpen any of the details in my image. Now, if you have like a compressed JPEG that you're working with, you want to make sure you check on removed JPEG artifact as well. Now, in this case, we don't need that because we don't have a lot of compression here, but that's what we're looking at. So we can see, let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. So here's all that noise going on in my image. And with this preview on, we've reduced a lot of it. All right, let's hit OK there and take a look at the before and the after. So we're just going to turn this layer on and then off. Well, <laughs> it's off now and then back on. So that's our first noise reduction. So that filter did a pretty good job. We got a lot of our color noise out of the way. And overall, we definitely reduced the noise that's in our image. But we still have a little bit left. So now we're going to jump into a surface blur. So let's go ahead and duplicate our layer. We're going to go to Filter, down to Blur, and down to Surface Blur. OK, now what a surface blur does, it basically blurs anything that's a solid surface. So let's say you had like a, a tablet or something like this you wanted to blur. It would basically know the outline of this area and blur everything that's inside that, but it wouldn't blur past a border. So it looks for edges and borders and use those as kind of like stopping points. So if I had just this area, it would blur here, but nothing else. So a surface blur, again, we're going to be able to maintain a lot of detail in our image, but still like this giant kind of dark area here in the arm, we're going to blur all of that together, and that's going to really help to reduce our noise. So let's go ahead and start bringing our radius up. Now, you can just use the numbers on your keyboard here. And my recommendation here is to go all the way to the point where it starts to work, but you don't want to reduce too much. You don't want to blur your image too much. Now, if you bring your threshold really far down, it's basically going to stop where it sees any type of transition. The farther you bring your threshold up, it's going to introduce more blur. So obviously, that looks horrible. We don't see any noise, but our image looks horrible as well. So we want to bring our threshold down to the point where we don't have any like transitions where we can actually see like sharp edges here with our image, but we still are able to reduce our blur. All right, let's go ahead and bring that up. And now, if we have a low radius, it's not going to do a whole lot of blur. So we want to bring our ra radius of our blur up as well. There we go. And that should help us to actually reduce the amount of blur in our image. So there we go. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to bring my threshold up just a little bit more. All right. Cool. So it's really about finding the balance between your images. Let's bring our radius down just a little bit there. All right, and hit OK. So let's go ahead and zoom out and see what our image looks like at 100%. So with this on and off, we can see we really haven't lost that much detail in our image. It still looks really good. But zooming in to 100%, now here was this is after our noise reduction tool. And here is after our surface blur. So you can see we've lost a little bit of information here, but we've completely reduced all of the blur in our image. All right, so let's go ahead and group those two and look at the before and after. So here's the before. You can see we have a little bit more detail in the image, but we have a ton of noise in our image. All right, and here's the after. We can see we've reduced the amount of detail in the image, which is kind of inevitable whenever you're reducing noise, but we've completely taken our noise down to zero. So, and again, you don't have to have these things be 100% visible. If you can live with a little bit of noise, maybe try reducing the opacity of these just a little bit so you get kind of a perfect mix between the two. All right, guys, and there we have it, an image that we've completely reduced the noise down to zero. So if you have noise in your image, just follow these key steps to remove it. First, create a duplicate of your background layer. Go to Filter, Noise, and then down to Reduce Noise. 
Now the key here is using your sliders to reduce the amount of noise without going too far. If you don't have a lot of noise in your image, there's no sense in cranking these sliders all the way up. In this case, we brought our strength all the way up to nine. We put our preserved details at zero, we put our reduced color noise at 90% and sharpen details back to zero. And that did a great job removing the noise. And the next thing was to add a surface blur to really get rid of everything. Now a surface blur is really dramatic because it actually blurs away your image. Now it'll also blur away your noise, so it's great for reducing noise, but don't use it unless you have to. Now the key here is finding the balance between the threshold and the radius of your surface blur. You don't want to go too high on either of these. So go just enough until you need it, until you reduce the amount of blur, and then stop, you're good to go. You can always lower the opacity of those layers to get a little bit more of a realistic look. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's episode. I hope it helped out. So the next time you have some noise in your image, now you know how to reduce it in Photoshop. Again, the best thing you can do is keep that ISO level down, and it's going to make sure you don't have any noise in your image to begin with. Now, if you love Photoshop and photography like I do, you want to click on your screen right about now because we're going to put a big subscribe button there. Basically, what that means is we'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week from Flurn. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or a comment, please leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. And basically, what a surface dirt bl surface blurt. <laughs> Whew. Bye bye. Goodbye, arrivederci, I'm done. <laughs> I choked on my own words just then. <laughs>